There's a wall sneaking up on us everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. You could be in a tight spot there, maybe. Pretty steep. Walls to the right, walls behind us. Some of that. Or is it an echo? Mm. Yeah, we're gonna follow the ridge line once we if we if we get there. Based on our hundred meter pixel prediction. Uh, we moved west a couple times. So Robert uh, warned us it does uh, walk around in and out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide to the right here. It looks like it's a little closer on our right. <coughs> Plus there's cool stuff to look at. Nice glass sponges. Mm -hmm. Voltaic sponges, and we are seeing some coralliids. Um, just let's start. Some there's a little, uh, there's a little promontory here, so it kind of sticks out in the. Uh, are we in a position to start zooming in on organisms, or no? Sure, we can always zoom. Okay, then we be on this one, and. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it's a little uh, wrong word. Pinnacle, promontory. Yeah. What's it, prowl? Stack. Stack. Uh, There's a lot coming in view. Turn on the uh, down lights here. And, uh, let's see if I can. And there's a small anthomastus or pseudo anthomastus tucked in uh, one of the crevices. Mm -hmm. So there is a little uh, current here as we poked out around the stack. Mm. Okay, you can, uh, seems to be somewhat stable there. You can try that. It's a little too dense for me to poke uh, and get a toe hold there, so we'll do a flying zoom. Okay, looks like another bamboo coral fan uh, with something else growing on it, which is difficult to ascertain. Maybe some hydroids, but there's something else growing on the bamboo coral fan. Thank you. Yeah, we can move. There's a bamboo whip at the back. Definitely voltage sponges, what looks like a small primnoid fan in the back. This is an interesting assemblage of organisms here. Yeah, I'm wondering if we should take a niskin here or if we should just wait a little to see if we find any more diversity or? Uh, I mean, the they same can. They yeah. took one not too long ago. Let me read the, their description of their niskin yeah. to make sure it wasn't a background or. There's a small Sorry. coralliid, uh, nice bolosoma sponges. You can see in the, uh, in the sonar the, the stack Hans is calling it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I just threw around another term. It's going to stick. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's a lot of Voltaire sponges and some whips in between. Also, the Niskin was taken <laughs> in an area very similar to this, so we can okay. wake. Yeah. We can yeah. wake. Sorry. <laughs> sure, throw Jane under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> always the archer, or always the arrow, never the archer. It's okay, me. I didn't take it personally. <laughs> I said I didn't take it personally. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. Sorry, I'm not losing the plot here. Um, be bring your head a bit to the north 
for me because they uh, right now the the nav screen is completely wonky because we have no Doppler so we're going on that's probably enough there we're going on blue dots not uh, so I don't believe the yellow RLB it's the blue schmear schmear seems to be about a three three zero heading Let's do 10 meters, 330, please. So I'm basing that on Atalanta and Hercules headings. So we're both looking that way. And we want to get Atalanta a little closer because I'm running out of leash here. Yes, please. Three three zero. Three three zero. Ten at three three zero. <coughs> That's where I'm getting that number. <coughs> um, front row, is this a good time to uh, jump in and do a little update for our viewers and just introduce ourselves? Sure, I can get the audio dialed as well. All right, great. So um, thank you everyone tuning in from the US, Canada, Australia, Sweden, Philippines, Norway, Italy, France, Finland, Germany, and Brazil. We're so glad you're here exploring with us. Um, we currently are in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument, and we are exploring um, Willard Seamount. Um, so I'm gonna drop down while I'm waiting for the ship, so you can chase me down. We're located roughly 40 nautical miles north of Curie Atoll. Um, and we're still in this northwestern uh, area of the Marine National Monument. Um, no previous dives have been conducted in this area and we're interesting in, interested in learning more about the geology and these benthic habitats. Benthic meaning bottom, um, on the bottom habitats. Uh, so we this is the Middle watch, or um, not dead man's watch, I guess. Afternoon, it's watch. <laughs> afternoon, afternoon watch. Afternoon watch, because it's currently 12, um, around 12 thir or 18 here. Um, so we'll go around and do some introductions. I'll start off. Uh, my name is Kara again. I'm serving as the science communication fellow on board the Nautilus, so sharing um, the research and exploration that we're doing here with all sorts of audiences. When I'm not here, I am um, serving as the seagrass and mangrove conservation coordinator at the Guam Coral Reef Initiative. And I'll go ahead and pass it to my right. Hans, gonna, if you have... I'm going to jump in there for just a minute. Sure. Uh, Jana, do you have, are you hip to put in um, the still camera on PC4 now? Still cam on PC4? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And that's your job, right, Hans? <laughs> right, taking lots of pictures for Jaina. That's my job. <laughs> Helps if I can see it. <laughs> I don't know how the other watch functions. I'm Hans. I'm a maritime archaeologist historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. This is my first extended mission on Nautilus, and I'm assisting the afternoon watch and also mm -hmm. the middle watch at night as watch lead and I also push that you know what button I push I push that button <laughs> I push the still camera button <laughs> thanks Hans so are you uh, are you adjusting the uh, like that you know the yeah all those shutter bug settings yeah I can uh, I'm just curious I don't know what any of them do I push them as well but never <laughs> in, in uh, never in anger I think it is shoots and raw, so it's fine, even if it's darker or something. We can edit it later. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is it doesn't matter? It shouldn't matter so yeah. much. I mm -hmm. was always told that you get enough light in an image, mm -hmm. then you can do anything in the raw format. Yeah. I always but said if you had too much, you're, it, you can you can go one way but not the other. I don't uh, yeah. I'm no shutter bug. Sorry. No, no worries. 
Okay, so coming back to introductions, I am Upashana Ganguly from India and uh, I'm a deep sea biologist studying the evolution of a group of deep sea corals, the sea pens. Uh, I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and hoping to finish my PhD quite soon. And I'm uh, a biologist uh, for this watch and Taylor. Hello, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the data logger on this watch. I'll be here logging all observations and species that we're seeing, as well as geological formations and changes in what we're seeing on the seamount to get a good document of what lives here and how we can best protect it. And I'll pass it on to Mia. Hi, I'm Mia. Uh, I'm before serving. you, uh, before Sorry. you do that, Mia. I don't. Know, Jana's struggling over there, so we'll walk through it here. Uh, control X there on that keyboard. Uh, I'm gonna tell the tell the world our our username is admin. Our password is uh, blank. So if you want to hack the system, by all means. Uh, then you press the yellow button up there by admin. Then you find your victim probably on channel three. Uh, maybe channel two. I forget. Yeah, PC to video 4, so click that. Yeah, PC to video. And then now you find uh, Stokam, which is, I think, 4 or 5, somewhere in there. We have nine pages of uh, KVM computers on this boat. So each of the nine pages has 10 computers on it. So, you know, what's that, 90 computers that are on the line, as my dad says? And then say view, and the eyeball. Beautiful. Thank you. you Sorry, got coming it. up on what? Pointy thing. Yeah, you're getting closer there. Okay. Um, sorry to interrupt. We have come down quite a while while we're waiting for the boat to move. And now I'm gonna um, just slide over, and we're gonna come back up. Roger. Do you want me to call in a move before we continue nope, introduction? Nope. nope. We're okay. right, right okay. where I want to be now. Good. So now I know where we are. Atlanta is uh, 20 meters off the wall, which is a nice um, safe distance. A nice distance to um, be able to see her. You can tilt down just a little if you want. Okay. So. And we're we're good for any zooms as well. Thank uh, you. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone done? Wait a second, wait a second. Everyone done? Uh, this is like when I try and call the bridge and then someone changes their mind. Okay. What do you do here? What's your so, name? So, hi, my name's Mia. <laughs> I'm often interrupted. I'm serving as the navigator. And also, while I'm not navigating, I help with seafloor mapping. On to Dan. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Dan. As you can see, I'm in a mood today. I <laughs> woke up without a headache today for the first time in like three weeks. So. Woo -woo. <laughs> what do you do, Dan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't do anything. Like so happy about that. Bark orders, yell at people, generally be grumpy. Oh, thank you for that, yeah. Which that's one my, is three? That's my teacup. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have some boundaries, you know. Sacrilege to put coffee in your teacup. Sorry, what was that, Jacob? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> Can you come up Give just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. When the tether gets above the lights, that could be dodgy. Aloha and good morning. My name is Jacob. I hail from the great city of Ever Beach, Oahu, on the South Shore. And I am sitting there. in the Atalanta chair. Thanks, Jacob. Do you mind putting your microphone a little bit closer? Oh, sorry. No worries. Good. Uh, yeah. Come up a bit more on the tethers. I, I don't like the way the tethers. I can't see what it's doing. It's going to hockle or not. It looks backwards. Yeah, 
it is. Okay. Uh, and let whenever me, let me come back down a bit. Things are come up, come up, coming up, coming up. Okay, the, that's good. So okay. see how the tethers. <laughs> yeah, not in the front anymore. Yeah, come up just a little bit more and look down. Sorry. All right. And whenever we're in a good spot, um, feel free to introduce yourself, Jaina. Yes. Aloha, my name is Jaina. I am from Hilo, Hawaii, and I am the video engineer on this watch. And we'll come bring it back around to Else. Thanks, Kara, um, Ali, and greetings, everyone. My name is Else, and I'm a supporting scientist here on the Nautilus when I'm not on Nautilus. I am a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center, which is located on an island in the Western Pacific. And I'm really happy to be here and looking forward to a great watch. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Else. Um, and if you want to learn more about any of the people that just introduced themselves, you can check out um, the profiles right under the live stream um, video on our website, nautiluslive.org. Um, and we also have our question box there, so um, please feel free to let us know your comments, your questions, stories. Um, we're always interested in um, what you're thinking about as we explore uh, together these amazing different uh, habitats and um, landscapes. Sorry, I'll try and get them uh, left to right on the screen there. So. It's a group of mushroom corals. Yeah, and interestingly, they are all arranged in a line. And I remember seeing a similar pattern on one of the previous sea yeah. maps that we were on. So I don't know if it, uh, why sometimes they uh, form like a chain, uh, which can be the way they were recruited uh, because of the current, the flow of water, something. But it's very interesting to see that this pattern, this arrangement. And we are seeing innumerable Volteria uh, euclectelid sponges uh, with some other, some, with some bolosomas. Uh, I think some ferreid sponges. Yeah, there's, there's some ferreid sponges, right? What else? Uh, there's, uh, when we are in a good position, we would love to have close up on some of the whips that we are seeing right and some of the smaller coral fans. You circle, I'll zoom. Okay. You circle, I'll get closer, and Jane will zoom. Right or the, this one, whichever one is easier. So many whips. Yeah. Because uh, the thicker one on the left to me looks more like a bamboo coral whip, but I want to uh, confirm that whether these are bamboo coral whips, and because Virginia okay, was don't also... don't move the while I'm getting close, please. Telling me there were Pull some prenoid me. whips. Unless you were coming down, of course. Okay, you can push in a bit there. We have to do a fly and zoom here. It's just a little dense to get any much closer. Yeah, bamboo coral. This one is bamboo, the left. The right, I'm not sure. The left is bamboo. The more orange, orangish one is bamboo. The left one, I cannot tell what it is. Great, thank you. Let me uh, play with the knobbies here a bit. I can get this machine to hold still a little better. Let's look up the primnoid uh, vips. Yeah, turn the joy gain down and then get the Z-bias where it um, is holding the yeah, the vehicle. The thinner one was a primnoid so fan. Uh, primnoid still drifting up, but just uh, very, vip. very slowly. Then I just have to put minimal controls in, and when she's zoomed in, then it's not all over the place. You know, it's yeah. When she uh, when she zoomed in, yeah, and if the joy gain's up too high, or the Z bias is not dialed right in. It's an art form that I haven't completely mastered yet. Some of our um, some of our other pilots are uh, 
particularly Gabby and Jess, two of the uh, ladies that we have that work out here. Both of them PhDs, by the way. Dr. ROV and uh, Gabby are just absolute magic at it. It looks like they're sitting on the seabed when they zoom in. Okay, push in there. You can uh, push in there, Gina. Yeah, there's something s small and red walking on the... I think it's one of your favorites in your top five, yeah. squat lobster. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the bamboo fans. Now the question is, what kind of a bamboo fan it is that I look up and ask our scientists in the chat. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Is that full zoom, is it? I can't hear you at all. Yes, it is. OK, thank you. Ah, uh, you can go in. It looks like there are some branches more towards the right which have broken off. Oh, there's a fish. Can we have a quick zoom on the fish to get a better? Uh, sure, yeah, push in there. Longish head. Push in a bit yeah, more. Yeah, I think it's this one, want. the Diplocanthopoma, maybe. The Ophidiformis for sure. Uh, I think so. And there's a small uh, sea urchin under the rock as well. It looks like the bathe today. Yeah, but I think we are also looking at the top view, right? That's very difficult to understand. That's the part that's throwing me off, the shape of the head. Because that has more like a flattened nose, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can continue moving. We'll, uh, okay, you can go in. Thank you. Continue looking for a better ID for the fish, but... Uh, the other thing I'm doing, Jacob, and instead of going in and out, it, it, you like, um, I don't know, the analogies lean into it a little. So you're giving Looks a constant like they can command have one way instead of going, you head know, shapes. flipping it. Kind of like you got to hold your steering wheel to the left a little if you're side hilly. Yeah. Or cross current with your boat. You got to. Yeah. Try to do that. Okay. And I know I'm getting out of the box if I see my hands jerking all around. One of the guys I learned from, you couldn't, you couldn't hardly see the joystick move. Yeah, when he was flying. Called him the Ice Man. And looking, uh, I used to. <coughs> uh, no, most systems have a joy gain you can adjust. And if you're trying to do smooth moves, you're usually about 50%. Just like, uh, I don't know if you fly any RC airplanes or cars or whatever, but they also have a rate. And also the joystick is flatter around the center than it is towards the end. So the it, it's a curve. So the further, uh, it's called exponential. So the further you get away from center, the more command the uh, uh, airplanes are typically that way as well. And we have some questions for Upashana, if you have a moment. Yeah. Um, this viewer is wondering, if a polyp dies, does that same area regrow with like a new polyp, or does that area just stay dead and then polyps continue growing like where the coral is extending? So like, can an area recover, basically? Yeah, I think it also depends on the part of the colony the tissue was uh, damaged in. So, uh, if it isn't, I have, it's, 
It isn't a very interesting question and I honestly don't have a clear answer for that because when I have seen, say for example, uh, sea stars feeding on corals, then we see those uh, uh, barren patches of the skeleton, right? So they are not regrowing in those areas. But then again, if it's like, an, there must be, there is a natural turnover rate for tissue. If it's a smaller amount of damage, I think they can regrow. Uh, but I think it depends on where it has been damaged and how. But this is a very interesting question. I yeah. will look up more into it. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for that interesting right. question um, and thanks yeah. for your thoughts. Good for another 10-330, please. Dan, did you need anything else from me? Sorry, I was troubleshooting stuff in the beginning. No, I'm, I'm all okay good, now. thanks. Okay. Thanks for asking. Um, and we have another question for Pashana, mm -hmm. when you have a second. Um, what they're asking, when they see dead coral skeletons, they seem rigid and hard. Are they actually rigid and hard? Um, how come when the coral seems alive, they seem flexible and even bendable with the current? Yeah, so uh, yes, they are rigid and hard because it's the skeleton that is exposed and we are looking at the skeleton that is inside. So uh, when they're alive, the more, uh, within quotes, the more softer appearance is because of the tissue and the polyps that uh, cover the skeleton. And the, uh, so when, to us, it seems more bendable and flexible, but at the same time, if it's dead, it can, because the, the, the skeleton is the same. It's not that it becomes more rigid when the coral dies. So it is still same, the flexible and bendable, but with, with the live coral, you have the polyps and the tentacles, which are moving in the water. Right. Those so soft parts. Yes, yeah, so that gives an appearance of the colony being more flexible. So if you just strip off all the tissue and have the, just the skeleton, it appears like that because it's more that the polyps are moving and the tentacles are moving. Right. Thank you so much for that Thank explanation. You. Yeah, yeah. They actually, that's why I am not fond, not just me, a lot of people working on octocorals, most people are not fond of the term soft corals that mm. have been mm -hmm. colloquially or that are sometimes colloquially used for octocorals because they are not soft. They have very <laughs> digit skeletons inside. Right. There is a group of true, so true soft octocorals where they lack any internal skeletons, but that's not the case for most of them. Thanks, Upashana. Yeah, if anyone has questions about bi biology, this is the watch to ask them. Upashana pointed out we, that we have four biologists on this watch, so um, pretty amazing. Yes, that is a good part. That's why, I mean, I enjoy being a part of this uh, watch because we actually have four biologists and that makes the discussions very interesting and each one of us works on different aspects of biology. So it ends up being a very fulfilling and a very, construct very constructive discussions where different perspectives come up and different questions come up. So. It's, it has been a great learning experience for me as well and I'm sure that we all appreciate more questions coming in so that that helps us think, helps us look up different aspects that we don't practice so much anymore and c continue having great discussions. Roger. Thank you. This happens to be a nice, <coughs> nice little perch there too. And for a viewer who pointed out our um, our uh, quad cam is currently showing a, a past video, we notified our um, 
our tech team and they'll be fixing that. So thanks for letting us know about that and hopefully it'll get okay. resolved soon. Oh, it was. Oh, a past video. Oh, uh, like a rerun. Push it in there, please. Like a looping clip of Dan getting up. <laughs> ah, I'll have to download that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why that particular three seconds just keeps playing. <laughs> So this is a black coral, definitely, that, uh, no, is it? Yeah, it is. It is, uh, wait, no, I'm <laughs> thrown off, wait, it kind of looks like, you know, it is a black coral. It is a black coral that we're looking at. Um, there's a small squat lobster. There are some hydroids growing on the stalk. And with some ophiroids, let me check the... Uh, ID of the black coral. It is a branched black coral with extensions coming out. So maybe some one of the stegopathies, but uh, we can continue moving while we check here in the back room. Murder. Thank you. I mean, I thought it'd be something interesting like the Mr. Ed show or, you know, but uh, whatever well, they chose. I wasn't showing plumber's crack, was I? <laughs> hey, there's a fish. Oh, yeah. Is that a fish? Yes. That's a fish. It is fish. It's one of the Halosaurids. Looks like it's eyeing out that lobster. <laughs> Thing could it have been a Lilopatis? Thing is, I've never seen no, I'm pushing a just a bit there. So not. Try and get a shot of his head. Yes, the head is important. I'll bring out my old notebook. Oh, it's like the ones Taylor and we thought looked like a dragon, I think. Or yeah, similar. even the name has sore in it. Okay. Like it's Halosaur, yeah. It which is kind of, yeah. I don't know if that is a coincidence. Does it have scales on the head? No. Mm. It has big eyes. Yeah. So, if it does not have scales on the head, then it is Aldrovandia. If it has scales, it is Halosaur. Oh. So, I think it's an Aldrovandia because it kind of looks translucent. -y. Probably both are in the same family, Hellosauridae. Yeah, it's a lovely yeah. shot. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's an Aldrovandia. Beautiful like fish. Like Beautiful. The top view looks like my boot terrier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a great view of the head. Thank you. Very photogenic fish. Mm -hmm my old notebook of notes. <laughs> it's like random, I need to arrange it. I need to start bringing my field notebook up here. It's <laughs> a great idea. I'm impressed that you sketch in your notebooks as well, you know, to focus your attention. It's really wonderful. Yeah, thank you. It's also like helps me remember things, right? Sometimes when I'm writing, I'm just using different words. So having little diagrams help me also. And it's easier than writing. So. Taylor and draws some amazing pictures. Carolina too kind. does Thank too. You. There, there's a lot of good artists on the on this cruise. Yeah, yeah. so does Kara and yeah. Elsa. Yeah, we had a little art party at the start of the, sh the expedition. Oh, I missed yeah, it. That was so fun. Yeah. I was probably busy mapping. Pro yeah, <laughs> Na napping no, it was or mapping. The <laughs> You're probably that, napping. That's another art form. <laughs> Very colorful. We will have though. one again. <laughs> That's what it'll say on Mia's shirt. I was probably busy mapping. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice bamboo whip that we are seeing. Uh, oh, that's a very cool bamboo. Uh, one of the sparse branches in the back. Maybe it uh, doesn't look like a true push sparse in there, branches. It'll just get a two for here. That's good, thanks. That's beautiful. It's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and Upashana mm -hmm. or Taylor Ann, um, we had a question that just is asking Halosaur? Like, what is that? It's a fish. <laughs> Can you help explain, like, the e oh, general? Yeah, yeah. So, it is a group of eel like fishes in the family Halosauridae. Uh, 
I'll and I'll give you the full taxonomy if that helps. So those these are uh, bony fishes, Actinopterygii, and um, within the family Halosauridae, we have. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many genera are there, but the two common gene genera that we see in the deep sea are the Aldrovandia and the Halosaur. So these are eel-like fishes, elongated, and they have a very nice elongated head as well. Uh, they're not true eels, but they're called, so they look like eels. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I wonder if the term Halosaur is also halo meaning like salt? Like Maybe. Maybe, right, because halophytes are plants yeah, that Yeah, haline. Like yeah. Haline. So maybe that's salt and then sore oh. means lizard. Oh, can be yes you're yeah. right the sore probably so comes from right. lizards salt lizard mm -hmm. yeah the lizards of the salt water <laughs> yeah these look like very beautiful uh, primnoids uh, primnoid fans uh, probably the calyptrophora the paracalyptrophora I, I still don't know how to differentiate between those two. And we are seeing some Coralidae fans as well, probably Paragorgia. Oh, uh, don't come up right now. They're good. <coughs> I'm just uh, getting a little overview here before I move in, so I don't... I'm just... Uh, can you circle again what yes. you wanted to see? These Sorry. these fans, this, or right. maybe this here, whatever is easier. Okay. And then have a quick look at this one also, if possible. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Are we seeing a bunch of uh, stalk bases? The like, or are those the like encrusting sponges? Or? I'm not sure. They can be encrusting sponges, you know, because they look too wide for some of the stalks. Yeah. The corals, okay. unless they're very. Pushing a bit there. Is it in there a little for us, China? Hold that, thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful primnoid fan. Uh, probably Calyptrophora, Paracalyptrophora, but definitely a primnoid. And the red looks like a Paragorgia from here. So definitely in the family Coralidae. Uh, and probably a Paragorgia. Uh, That's great. Thank you. Thank okay, you so much. Okay, Thanks. Very dramatic topography here. Yeah. And there's another different kind of a primnoid in the back, or maybe a smaller sized colony, but definitely primnoids. So suddenly we are seeing, uh, this is interesting. I think, uh, I'm good for another 10, uh, th 330, yeah. Right. The reason I didn't have you come up, Jacob, we're stretched out here, so. Yes, I would have took you off the. Yeah. And we managed to tether, right, with, uh, if you're closer, I have you come up. If we're further right. away, I can. Yes, sir. I'm actually pull up, pulling it up. Uh, push in there just a bit for me. Yeah, this is a glamorous sand. Uh, the branches are, are they nodal or internodal? Can we uh, just uh, zoom in a little bit more on any one of the branching points? Sure, go ahead, Jan. If that's possible. Push in a bit more there. Looks like internodal, right? Uh, I don't know. Look at that. Yeah, I can't quite. Oh, there is one. Maybe there's one. Yeah. Because I don't see the nodes. It's not no. dark where the branches are coming out. Yeah. Because here, it's below the node, right? Because yeah. the node is here. I think it's internodal. I think it's internodal, internodal. yeah. OK. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it looks like a bamboo fan. Oh, oh. jelly. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Yeah, you can go oh. ahead, thanks. And a small paragorgia with ophiurides at the base. <laughs> 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 the sounds of excited scientists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are so scientific. <laughs> and that's really good. It's Thank everyone's you. favorite, though. They love it. <laughs> I think everything is our favorite. <laughs> Was that a jelly? We haven't yeah. seen yeah. many. Oh, there's a, is that a sea star hanging, Mia? Yeah. Oh, probably is. Think so? I think so, too. Wow, this is a really tall rock feature here. I mean, we are on a seamount, so. <laughs> I think these ledges and outcrops, I don't know the official terms for these, but these just block the incoming currents and create yeah, there's a lot smaller. of dimension to, yeah. to yeah, the structure here. It increases the surface area for the water such that uh, we suddenly see very high density of corals. Thank you so much. Are these not uh, dikes, like we we're saying on the other seamount? Or you think I have enough real estate to come up with it? I don't it? know. No, you're just good. wait you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right. I have to look up Tell what dikes way. are. <laughs> no, I, I'm not the person to answer that, I'm sure. No, uh, they know. I, I just remember, I think Hannah or one of the geologists mentioning the term. And just wanted to jump in real quick and say half a day to a, a bunch of new viewers from Guam. Thank you so much for joining us. If any of you are tuning in after that, um, ship to shore session with JFK High School, Talafovo Elementary School, um, DL Perez Elementary School. Thank you so much for joining us again, and feel free to ask your questions in our chat box on NautilusLive.org. Uh, this looks like zoanthids overgrowing the skeleton of something that was there. That's very interesting that how densely they have covered the skeleton. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay, go in. Smack if you do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Very distracting. Sea star? Yes, <laughs> there's a sea star going yesterday. it. I think we can see the inverted my boss stomach. My just kick my chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mia, you can pass that stick back here. We're kind of uh, using the uh, sea star stick. You have the draw marker thingy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Push <laughs> fair. There, please. So it's again one of one of those three that I'm always confused about. Definitely a gony asterid. It is feeding on a bamboo whip. Yeah, the business side of a sea star. Yeah. Chewing with its mouth open. That is that is beautiful. And just jumping in again, um, we have some comments about um, not being able to see the stream. So if you are on the quad channel, the quad channel is currently um, not working correctly. But if you go to channel one, um, you can see the Hercules view. Channel two, Atalanta's view. And channel three um, is uh, working correctly for the control van view as well. Um, so apologies for um, that. Uh, we're having okay, a go ahead. few technical difficulties, but we're working on it. And in the meantime, any of those other channels will work, and you can access them both from our web page as well as the YouTube page. Just check for those different channel one, two, and three. Um, yeah, so we have let people know about our um, issue up in the control van with the quad video, so we'll be um, addressing that shortly and hopefully we'll be able to have that quad stream going soon. Our top scientists and engineers are all over it. Yeah. This is a great area in abundance, diversity, and topography. Absolutely, absolutely. So my understanding of what the, the dikes are in these um, seamounts, these underwater volcanoes, are the internal structure, the channel of the, the magma, the lava flows within the existing seamount, where the, the, the plumbing, so to speak, of where the magma is coming up within the seamount. And to see them, we would need to be in an area that which has collapsed and revealed the internal structure of the seamount. So maybe this is part of that, showing the internal structure, okay, this kind of stack. Back. I'm not sure. 
nice and easy. Let me know if you need help figuring that out, Kara. I'm not sure. Okay, if, I've never done that before, but I can help. <laughs> And then some nice uh, bolisoma sponges, crinoids. Can we get a zoom on the brown encrusting possible uh, sponges? Yes. The on the rocks? Okay, yeah. Hold, yeah. Hold on. So I like can't circle from here. Sorry. I just want to confirm if those are like stalks or. Can be stalks as well. I yeah. don't know. Hold fast. Yep, that's what it Hold looks fast. like, but they're a little weird. Yeah. Shaped, but it could be a sponge. Stock. Encrusting, or oh, they can be encrusting sponges. Yeah. Uh, push in there for us. Good things. Out just a bit so we can see the lasers. Good. Yeah, it can be encrusting sponges. It kind of looks. Roger. Watch it. I think we got some good images. That's great. Thank you. I think it might be just the stalks of the old Walteria sponges, but it might be encrusting sponges. I will keep looking. Yeah, you're right. They can be the basis of the old vault area, given how many vault area sponges there are. And there are also like some vault areas that are dying, and you can see that. So can be the basis. Of, yeah. See this one? You can see the base of the sponge still attached to it. Yep. Now we know. Thank you. At it's least for that one. We yeah. Know. I mean, it's very difficult. They look Even very similar one. to yeah. the yeah. other ones. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, there you can go white. Oh, that one right there, yeah. And we had a viewer ask what guides you're using for animal ID. They found the NOAA guide, but they're wondering if there's any it's other good. One of those sea stars with a lot of arms. Mm. Yeah, one of the solasterids. Yeah. Um, they were wondering if there were any other good public resources. Do you have anything to share, um, Taylor Ann or Upasana? Uh, we generally use the benthic animal guide. I think this is the one that they're talking about. Um, there may be some other resources, but this is primarily the one that I use. Uh, Taylor, do you have something to add? I know um, the Dark Lab, I think, Good has their own guide. Um, so but yeah, I primarily no. use this one. It's the easiest to, you know, quickly reference and find the taxa that you're looking for. Um, but I believe a couple of I'm labs are currently working on making them more, I guess, picture-based and user-friendly, um, but I think right now they're still currently under construction. But you could check the dark lab. Um, I think they're at UH. I'm not too sure. Yes. Okay. I'm going to jump in here for a second. Sure. So I get um, really nervous when we're in close to the dense, you know, uh, where the where there's a lot of density and we're in really close. So yep. I'm inches away from, uh, you know, 100-year-old corals. So... Um, I really, it's hard for me to concentrate and uh, keep an eye on all everything. And if we're not 
laser focused on um, on what's happening on the dive, it it uh, makes it a lot more challenging. Right. So okay. Could you clarify what we would do differently oh. to help you out? Um, just the anything that's bit. not related to exactly what we're doing. So I'm trying to listen to the to the. Um, right. Okay. So if you, you can know. just um, let us know, just like you did whenever we're. Um, getting too close to something and you want us to pause well, uh, discussion, just let us know and we'll yeah, also... I don't, I don't want to have to bark all the time, so sure. you know, kind of read the room a little bit. Right. Uh, we can you also... You can see when we're inches away from, from things and there's high density in right. general. We can also try to keep an eye out that and eye out for um, when we're really close to stuff and um, uh, make sure the uh, SPL is more operations focused. Yeah, so... When we're up close and personal, there's more interaction between the back row and the front row for operational, you know, what we want to see, what we want to look at. And yep, that's good guidance. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, you'll hear, usually hear the front row get a little quieter and... Uh, it's, Don't forget to use your circle pen so you can show us what to look at. Yeah. I always feel like an ogre when I say that. So no, you not know, at you all. Can, you can see when I'm further back, I'm several feet away, you know, five meters away or whatever. But when I'm pushing right in, right. Um, I yeah, guess it's yep. not literally always inches away from what could be centuries old. Right, animals. and we want to protect one, that. One touch, yeah, and that's. Uh, I guess it's not always clear because sometimes we zoom in too. So, um, again, if, if any time any time we're zooming, that's uh, right. Yeah, we're probably up close with you know five thousand pounds of vehicle inches away from priceless. Uh, and um, um, sometimes the fans are also kind of loud. So if I can't hear you guys talking in the front row, um, just you know hop back on SPL, and that way we know that you're talking, and um, we can pause any conversation we're having back here as well. Right. I feel like sometimes uh, yeah, people in the back row aren't even watching what's going on up here. It's completely checked out, like not in the room. So I get a little frustrated sometimes. I'm sorry. No worries. No, we're okay. definitely not checked out back here. Sorry about <laughs> that, Dan. Another time. Uh, you guys aren't. It's sometimes, I, and I'm just as guilty. I go like completely off the rails. And Yes, please. Looks like we're right along the ridge line here again, would you say? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, we're up at the top now. That's pretty narrow. What's that? Uh, no, we're good. We're up at the top now, so we're moving the boat. I'm four meters up. Can tell by the sonar, I'm not, you know, two meters away from something. But also, uh, yeah, this sonar, when we're close to the cliff, you know, I'm within two meters of the cliff. With yeah, right now we're just out in the middle of nowhere, so I can relax for a second. <laughs> Dramatic. <coughs> We appreciate you for caring so much, Dan. No, it's uh, it's typical for it to flap a little like that. Could be a bigger problem if it was Hercules.
character. I was pulling you there, I wasn't paying attention, I was looking at uh, Let's do another 10, uh, let's do 10, 3, 1, 5 for now. Yeah, it's, uh, basically our vehicle's heading sped off to the left a little. Um, just jumping in quick update for the viewers. The quad cam is now working, so if you'd like, if you prefer that view, feel free to um, tune into the quad cam on uh, our website, nautiluslive.org, or our YouTube page. Sorry, our path is to the southwest. Okay, I get it now. Um, look down a little bit for me. Nice. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Yeah, this is uh, this would be a macro urid, different from the last fish that we saw, probably in the genus Moridae, but we will have to check that a bit more. It has like the head of an ahi. I'm gonna spin around the other way and Roger. <coughs> look at yeah. So you're good right now for. Uh, I'm just gonna put the tether behind me. Gonna call up a little bit. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, sorry. How Roger. much movement we had on the boat? No movement right now. Oh, so just out waiting for our to go. Roger. Are we in a comfortable position that we can address a question from our viewers right now? Sure. All right, so um, question for um, Upashana. Are there any of the corals we see down here um, bioluminescent? Have we ever seen bioluminescent corals? Sure. Um, have you ever seen bioluminescent corals, so like glowing corals? Yeah, bioluminescence is seen in some of the deep sea corals, and I know that some of the uh, sea pens are also known to have bioluminescence. We have done bioluminescence tests previously in the deep sea and uh, across several groups of octocorals it is commonly seen. Bring your and head to the left a bit. Uh, even the, the sea pen that we collected 20 uh, meters. on the last sea Bring mount, to the, the Valdesenia, that is also known to have bioluminescence. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if that species, and we don't know what species that is, but a lot of them do have bioluminescence. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, 
And just a small shout out for Pasha and Taylor and for sharing those guides earlier. Um, they are really excited to try to identify with us as we continue our exploration. So that's really awesome. Thanks for uh, joining in and checking things out with us. That looks like a sponge, mostly like a dead sponge, right? Yeah, frayed. Yeah, I'll say a dead sponge. And the one in front looks like a calyptrophora, uh, but there's also another kind of primnoid more towards the right, which has a slight, which is slightly denser uh, branching pattern, but that's also a primnoid. Dead because okay. of its color or because of the sediment that's on there that's not? Yeah, from the color and from the texture, it appears mm -hmm. uh, dead because ferrate, uh, the structure, the pattern seems like a ferrate sponge and they're very wide and translucent like when they're alive. So glass sponges, mostly when they're alive, have a more whiter color to them, mm -hmm. except for those neon green ones that we are seeing. But this, this color is generally more associated with a dead sponge. Thank you so much. Okay, go in. Sure. Okay, hold what you got there. I'm Mia's doing that, I'm going to zoom out here. Actually, can you do that on your, on that machine and give me that ROV back? way to go here. Okay, I get it now. Sorry, it took me a minute. Can we move 20 meters uh, 270, please? angles going on here. Confusing. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can see the math mathing in your head. Uh, no, no math. I failed math horribly. <laughs> Same semester I failed art. While I'm cheating, what I'm doing is uh, looking at the sonar return so you're looking west and you're lighting up at 40 some meters away yeah pretty significant target but uh, also to the north is obviously stuff mm -hmm. and then I finally dropped down enough and got a shadow of you know they come in at right angles and our general want to go direction for waypoints is uh, southwest. southwest so uh, if we 
go over to that one and then we can go so we go west then we can go south along that smart yeah so like, just like kind of cut across right there you're since you're facing kind of north you're just gonna yeah in kind theory. of like loop like that and then boom in theory as we go west i'll stay on this one until we hit the hit that westerly ridge and then we can go south gotcha. in theory so you can look to the right a little now yep. it's easier to so that's why I have you move your head in around this to get a uh, kind of give you more place so you can make that well perpendicular target in the big scheme of things does this sponge have a lot of different head or it looks like three or four yeah so this would be one of the colophagus rosellid sponges we had collected one of those at the last SEMA and And we're looking at primnoid fans. Yeah. The more taller and pinker colony looks like a paracalyptrophora. The more the one at the base. Right. No, you can leave it on that right. I think we have some students tuning in from Guam that are probably completely unfamiliar with deep sea corals. So I know where we are from the dots. As we go through, you know, the next several minutes or something, if you don't mind, just like doing. Um, Maybe common names and scientific names, if yeah, possible, for yeah, the yeah, next yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And just helping us ID, th I think that would be really fun to absolutely. learn about these different things we're seeing. So the fans that we are currently seeing, more towards the right, the ones that we passed. So uh, there aren't so many of like common names for them, but I would say the family names are more uh, commonly used. And So these would be the primnoid octocorals. All of these are octocorals. So we can generally ID the octocorals based on the very fine and even branching patterns. They look very uniform throughout that, throughout the colony. Uh, the whips that we are seeing, by whips I mean the unbranched tall structures. Good for another 20 north, please. Currently in... Uh, sorry, west, west, west. Thank you. Yeah, the ones that are currently in view. are uh, the bamboo coral whips. We have been seeing some primnoid whips as well. So bamboo corals are a different family, the Keratoisididae, and subfamily Keratoisididae. Uh, they are known for their alternating black and white skeletal material, skeletal structure. Uh, we are also seeing lots of sponges, the more uh, fuzzy looking tall cylindrical f sponges all of these are glass sponges, so they are hexactinellids, that's the term for the glass sponges. And these are uh, the euplectelid sponges called the Voltaria sponges. So euplectelid is a family of, uh, of glass sponges, one of the major families. We are also seeing some crinoids, the yellow flower-like structures which are commonly called the sea lilies. They are perched on top of some of the spo sponges, and uh, they are a kind of echinoderms uh -huh, in the class Crinoidea. And yeah, I think we also saw some small paragorgia or bubblegum coral. Those would be the more reddish white fans, the small ones that we saw. I um, think that's what we are currently seeing. They're small. There are a couple of. Uh, sparsely branched bamboo corals as well so wow awesome thank you for that little <laughs> crash course in deep sea biology that was awesome thank you the glass sponges are my favorite now yeah they're beautiful they're very beautiful
I think that's a different type of a furriate sponge, but I could be wrong. I don't remember this, but I've seen this before. Uh, yeah. It is... Yep. Yeah. Keep my heading, or you want me to turn towards you? Uh... Epsidos... Oh, you want to stay in the box? Scopula... Scopulia... The other sorts. I'm going to try and jump on the other side of the ridge here so you can look to your right. Roger. And I'm actually going to hop off so we can connect with Roger. the Girl Scouts of Texas. So if anyone out there listening would like to sign up for a ship to shore interaction as well, where we call into your classroom or community group and share about what we're doing here and you can talk to different ocean explorers, feel free to check that out. And um, there's a Google form, you can sign up for a time um, and we'll try to accommodate you whenever we have expeditions going out to sea. So have fun, I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Thank you, Kara. Thanks, Kara. Keep an eye on your altitude there for me. Yep. Might change rapidly. So. Nothing really on the sonar yet. Yeah, it's right below you there, though. Yeah, this looks like uh, this is definitely a bamboo coral, and what is the I four clade in the family Caradoisidae? Uh, and I'm quite sure that these are not very commonly observed, so this would be a great observation for uh, this particular kind of bamboo coral. That's a if great I turn, like, Thank Just you. Just come down, right? Come down. Kay. You're bouncing me. Down five. Down five. Trying to uh, back out a bit and get the uh, DSC. Standing by. Back out to us a little more. Right, that's good, thank you. What was that? Oh, for the stills, okay, I see, thank you. Okay, sorry Jacob, uh, when we're in there tight like that, uh, yeah, we have the animal in between the bumper and the porch, mm -hmm. so up and down is, you know, and any changes or heading or anything. Could yeah, it was go poof, it, it would have pulled you toward and hit the rock. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what it would have done. So, but uh, coming down was, you could see it bouncing. I didn't realize we had the high delta there. No worry. I don't know if you wanted the high delta, so like you know you could. Well, typically stay. when I'm under you, yeah. But now you can come up a bit. Roger. Um, but the twenty, depending on the weather, and. Uh, what's happening but that was you know you could see yeah. it telegraphing to the vehicle so I just and usually a couple meters will be like ah oh, instant relief mm -hmm. Roger okay uh, I'm gonna keep this heading and wait for you to come in the box 
I don't know what we're going to do. Too. What are we supposed to do here? We're going west. That yep. was the idea. Up five. Roger. Who made all that test? I was uh, trying to decide what side to drop down on here. I was trying to get a sense of the current, and then we went to look at that thing, so give me a second here. Toe. Yeah, Raj. Okay, I'm going to uh, hopefully turn the right way. I'm going to turn this way, and we're going to uh, blue water for a second over to the next uh, cliff that you're about to hit. Or maybe we can follow I the right here. I got turned around there. You can look to the right a little if you want. To the right or towards west? Uh, you can look to the right. I think I know where I am. Roger. we've been here before. <laughs> I got turned around, sorry. I recognize that sponge. You know you're lost when you are wandering around in the dark with a flashlight and you see the same tree again. trying to get west so we can go south that's the uh, change my heading to look west uh, no you're good you're Roger. good yeah i think i know where i am though, or I where i'm going i think sinking uh yeah green line is going the right way we're all good. Roger. Let me come down with that delta, that's fine. You're good. Roger. Current's uh, favorable, though, so the tether's not... Yeah. When it gets close together, then that's when I get nervous, like it's going to, you know, pigtail. Mm -hmm. In theory, there's a cliff to our left. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is new territory. I think I'll let left just a little bit, so I'll continue to go west southwest there on the Gonna be a cliff in front of us. You want me to be? You want me to be perpendicular with it? Uh, eventually, yeah, but you can keep me in the box for now. Roger. Now we're seeing some uh, polyopogon elephant ear sponges along with the vault area, and I think that these would be our first observations, at least on our watch, for the polyopogon. Roger. I might have seen one earlier, but okay. yeah, not very many. Okay. Thank you. We are continuing to see the bamboo webs, the Voltaria sponges, a uh, few paragorge, or at least corallids, distributed sparsely, uh, some crinoids, 
and some of the uh, less branched keratoises, bamboo corals. Uh, look left a little bit more for me. Yeah, you can bring it around to the west now, I think. Westerly. I'll light up the cliff there. And then I'm going to come up. You can come up as well. We're pretty close to under you now. Is that the elephant ear sponge? Gotta love it, overhanging cliff. Nice abundance. Yeah, yes. Uh, mostly it looks like different uh, the Paracalyptrophora primnoid fans, uh, the one in front, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, we have another one of the ferried uh, Aspidoscopulia sponge on the top right, lots of Voltaria. Uh, there was a small, uh, will it be possible to have a quick zoom on this one? Sure. Thank you. Can be again a uh, skeleton overgrown by zoanthids. I hope it's something else. Okay, push in there. I'll turn another light on. Uh oh. There a reason you don't really like the down lights on all the time? Yeah, this again looks like overgrown by zoanthids. And we have yeah. a shrimp. Thank you. Yeah, we can continue moving. Thank you. Okay, I can go in. It was probably a primnoid skeleton, given how the bar branching is. They, um, they shine in the camera. Mm. They highlight all the... And there's um, a... It forces Jane out to close the iris down, and you can't see as far uh, out. Always making everybody's life easier. So nice. Wow, making my life easier. <laughs> if I can see. <laughs> and getting uh, good video. And that is a different problem. Our production manager is very gotta picky. Get the, gotta get the money shot, yeah. He's very picky. I get feedback all the time. Good, bad. There looks to be another kind of a primnoid fan in the background, which I'm not sure what type, but that definitely is uh, one of the smaller fans. Can be a Kellogorgia. I can actually read this one. Am I going to come up a bit? No, really. Sure. Let's see how it branches from the base. I think we have been seeing some of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I we think in the back row that we have been seeing some of the Narella primnoid fans. These would be slightly smaller, but branching more from the base. The number of those holdfasts. We decided those were holdfasts, yes? At least some of them were. Uh, okay. I don't think we can be sure about all of them. Yeah. Just going to uh, drop down here and have a look at the. Let me come down with you for the delta. Uh, no, we're good. Gotcha. It's, we're a little close now, so that tethers. Uh, in danger of not going, but 
So you see when I, I don't know if you can notice, but when I turn off the downlight, she can open the iris a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you don't have that kind of haze in front of you like you're looking through dirty glass. Mm. Foggy window. Yeah. But it's also, uh, yeah. it depends on if we're looking that way or looking that way or how also how close we are. Is that from more scatter from the brighter lights? Uh, it's a factor of how close the camera is to what you're looking at, so how much seawater it's looking through. Right. So in this case, we're you know four meters away. When we're uh, two meters away, or you know closer to, well, and the ROV is always usually looking down 45-ish. So. I don't know, there's no hard and fast rule, it's just kind of... Yep. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good time, but if possible, could we take a niskin here since we're seeing a little bit more density and diversity of corals? Sure. And also because the diversity has altered since when we started, we're seeing more paracordias and primnoids. Yeah. Hey, Taylor Ann. Yeah. Uh, what was sample 083? Let me check for you. Slurped of an undetermined species of Chrysogorgia. Okay. I was just going to say they're really close to that, so if it's in a skin, they would be pretty close together. Oh, okay. How far are we from the last one? That sample? Um, oh, I can see, yeah. You can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're very close. Like 80 meters. Okay. Um, maybe we should hold off then. I didn't realize we were that. I mean, it's just... Let me that just talk to you directly. Same time if I remember correctly. No, yeah, no, it wasn't in a skin, so yeah. I think we can still take one. Here. Yeah, I would say we should take one because that place where they took the chrysogorgid, there was hardly any other corals around. Okay. And there has been a drastic change okay. in the community. Yeah, as well. we have a number of Niskin bottles. Let's take one. It's a good idea. Did you ever watch the, or read the, read the book, or uh, watch the movie Never Cry Wolf? I know what. Yeah, about. I know the story. Farley Mullet. He says, "Good idea." <laughs> Translation. And uh, we need a little personal with the uh, Niskins. <laughs> Is craft on? Because you have no comms. No, it's not on yet. Okay. I'm going to tuck the Niskins in here underneath the cliff, and then we'll take one. So the only Niskin that's been fired so far is Niskin 6. Roger, Niskin 6. Let me turn off craft. Yes, please. Craft is on. That would be uh, upper bumper parking. 
<laughs> can zoom in on uh, Atlanta if you want there while we're doing this. I need this one though. That white coral's really pretty. Sorry, did I hear you say we can zoom in on the Atlanta? Yeah, if you want to. It's uh, parked on the bumper there. You want to zoom on these guys mm -hmm. while we're here? Yeah, that okay. would be great. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Stop moving the camera. Is that full zoom, is it? It is. Maybe Thank you. That looks forward. like a paracord, too. That's great. Thank you so much. And we can actually three, see two different colonies. There's a small paragorgia at the base, which is kind of mixing with this one. That's great. Thank you so much. And if we can get a quick zoom on the more darker red, smaller fan that was in the background, that would be great as well. OK. You can uh, pull out just a bit for me. Yeah, the one in the center, yes, the more darker red okay. on the back. Zoom there. Oh, there's a nice squat lobster immunidopsis on the rock. Yeah, that looks like a paragorgia as well. So that we have a few paragorgia fans. There's something you know yellow on the this. rock. I can press on um, any of yeah. these for you. Roger. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay, you can uh, go ahead. And we have some small anemones tucked in the Top rock. down just a little on the Atlanta camp. So you can zoom in on the... So I have to uh, rack the camera back here. It takes a second for it to move back. I don't poke myself in the eye. Stop moving the boat around. We're trying to get a zoom on Atlanta. <laughs> no, no <I'm> joking. <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, open the iris a little so I can see what I'm doing? In yeah, here? sorry. Thank you. I think we're going for number five, right? Yep. Anything for six? Right? Okay, Janet. Give me a countdown. I forgot what I was supposed to say. Three, two, one. Oh, three, fire. two, one. Niskin. <laughs> um, oh yeah, oh, Niskin oh, in oh, three, oh, two, oh. one. We have to wait, pause, wait, wait. pause the launch here. I'm I forgot what the saying was. Is that it? Fire Niskin. It was... Uh, <sighs> Ooh, strike one. It's a really silly way to do your Niskins. It was uh, three... Two, one, Niskin. Did it go? Mm. I'm gonna pull that thing right off. Yeah. Did it go? I don't think it I went. I don't think it went. Let's see, so the one at the bottom of the camera. Hit the uh, sample sample. So the one at the bottom, six, five, four, three. Uh, no, six one, is far, two, right? Three, four, five. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. oh. I gave it all I got. Yeah, I can't. So That's it right looks open to you? What's uh, that? So it looks open to you? No, still? it looked like it went. Um, one, two, three, four. So five looks upright, and six is lost in the. Uh, not a very good camera view. I need to put a different camera there. Okay, you can go back to um, 
Dave. Yes, please. Where is it? See it? No. Maybe it fell off the porch. No way. It's on the porch. So it's in the vehicle somewhere. Should I move the manipulator? Oh, it's right there under the camera. You see it? The white little. No. Oh, no, that's the screw. Oh, yeah. Under the camera, maybe. Is it? Is that it? Oh, yeah. Right behind the. the Not anywhere I can grab it. Well, let me the porch out and porch in real quick. See if it'll move. Uh, sure. Ah, there it is. Yeah, porch okay. out a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, let's make sure I'm clear here. Yeah, porch all the way out. Porch is out. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to try it one time. Yeah, is it even grabbable? Is it worth it? What could possibly go wrong? So looking through this camera is a lot like trying to use your mirrors when you're backing up your trailer. Yeah. That's backwards. Is it too small to even pick up? No. I Ping pong. I tried. Could you get it with the slurp? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, can't get that far? Uh, no, because it's captured here with this thing. Mm, yep. Uh, I don't know. I might be able to. I haven't tried to slurp a uh, lotto ball. I think that might be the end of the slurp. It's worth the try. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess I'm not aware of the diameter of the slurp versus the... I mean, either it could ball. be game over for slurp. <laughs> oh, gosh. Then we would really be in a bad spot. Yeah, we need the slurp. <laughs> um, it's PLA. It's technically biodegradable. Someone could, I'm sure, make an argument that it's not. But, uh, yeah, I obviously pulled a little too hard on it there. Porch in? Yeah. Slowly. Going wide on Atalanta. Thank you. Thank you. They are, uh, they're on monofilament line, which is, uh, oh, I think that's, what is that, 50 pound test? Um, I don't know, is it on 50 pound test? Yeah, it's, so I think it's 8th inch, 16th inch. Yeah, about. So they're that way for a reason. Um, It, they're meant to, you know, let go if we pull too hard on them, otherwise it'll break the niskin. Uh, I think it fired. Yeah. No. I let's, was as let's assume it did. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. Do you want me to turn off craft? Uh, yes, please. Craft turning off. Craft is off. I'm gonna, is it red book up here? Yes it is, I can write it down. Can you put a note in there that number five is now blank and I need to uh, change that port camera out for uh, one of the non-wide angle ones. 
So it should look just like the starboard rail one. Yeah. And we have one of those cameras. We tried the wide angle camera because we wanted to keep it tucked in uh, for a previous job for ONC because we don't want you know our stuff hanging out. But now that the Niskin rails are on there, we can have the camera hanging out. I thought about changing it last night when I stuck it out there. But Taylor Ann, was that 084? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Because I had it listed as failed, but I changed it to success. Yeah, I just did too. <laughs> We might think about changing the balls too to something that's, those are great for the uh, smaller jaws, but they're kind of not optimal for these coral jaws. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, earlier if you preferred the other handles we used to use over these, but I would guess that's a yes, but maybe not. Uh, the loops were always challenging because they were hard to grab and they would get tangled up. What would be really great is to be able to push a button here in the Niskin's trigger. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, totally doable. <coughs> Time and money. They could be on a little hydraulic cylinder or an electric um, actuator to, uh, oh, that was a fail. It's on my uh, wish list. How does uh, bearing 200 look for you? I, uh, let me think about that for a minute. That's about the third time that's happened, and the first time it's that I've mangled it. Still very steep. It's an area of tricky navigation. For those watching, we're diving on Willard Seamount in Papahanao Makuakea Marine National Monument. We're at about a depth of 1,800 meters and rising towards waypoint four on our transit up this seamount, maybe 80 meters north of waypoint four. And after that, the dive will continue. Still in this beautiful area of glass sponges. Yes, glass sponges and lots of bamboo whips. Or sparsely branched bamboos with some paragorges. Um, put your heading on the uh, proposed ship move heading for me, please. Oh, is that heading, Mia? Mahalo. Two zero zero Roger that turn the cat. Yeah. 
That works for me, yeah. Perfect, thanks. Uh, no, good for 20. I'm good with that. I'm always curious what's on the other side of the ridge when we're on a ridge. Worse. More, more ridge. Well, <laughs> worse than a cow is like the grass greener on this side or this side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over waypoint four, it looks like we'll go into a bit of a saddle before we continue climbing, and you never know what that change will look like. Yeah, I'm trying to get us a little bit west of the saddle so we don't have to go all the way into it because it seems to be easier for the ROVs, at least from what I've been observing since working here. Right. So we'll just skirt the western side of the saddle, if this is correct and not a bunch of contours of lies. That beautiful uh, bamboo coral that we have in front of us. Uh, Stark beauty, like a saguaro cactus. Yeah. We have the Ampedoscopula sponge as well. Had before. This uh, sponge? That's a sponge. A uh, different type? Down. Yes. Uh, Come down, yeah, please. Uh, are we in a position to collect? Yeah, we can be. Down five. Uh, then uh, this a snip of this bamboo coral will be a good option because uh, they're trying to, they know that there's a new species of bamboo corals, but currently the morphological scale, the morphological range of that particular new species hasn't been defined and they are trying to get new samples from each end to do that. So this, for that, will be a good candidate. A small snip will be good enough. All right. Thank you. That's good. And we've seen enough of these. Yeah. We know they're abundant enough and we're very careful mm -hmm. with our decision to sample. Come up a bit. No, you're good. Roger. Uh, 
I changed my mind. Come up five. No, Let's see what happens. Up five. Right there. I come down just a little bit, maybe a couple meters. Give me a little more. Gonna come more. down three. Sure. Let's give a little more slack there on the. Roger. Feels like it's bouncing a little bit. Down three. Roger. I'm going to, uh, oh look, there's a benthic tina floor. I can zoom in there. See the strands? Yeah. yeah. What is that? It's probably from a benthic tina floor, right? Mac it on the coral there. I wondered why it was skinny there. Oh, oh yeah, it's stuck on the polyps that see the tentacles. What, do you, what did you say that was, Dan? Benthic tina floor. Um, why am I moving? What's happening? I sometimes you see them with them because it's not like always associated, but I've seen that. And the clinophores are always fascinating. This is one organism that's come onto this coral? And yeah, it's yeah. You know, the comb jellies, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. so it's a benthic kind, so they don't float, they remain on something. Ah, I see. Yeah, that's full zoom. Right. I'm not sure why the vehicle's moving. I'm perched on a marble. I see the bobbing up in there. See if I can just put a little more jam on it here. Oh, I see why. Uh, give me a second here. One thruster was reversed, so oh. it's doing that business. Why was it? In, why was it reversed? Uh, just when you when you when press stop on the heading, and I came in, and it kind of found its home. Mm. I wasn't giving it forward stick. I was too neutral on when I engaged auto heading. Oh. So if I have a little forward on and you engage oh. auto heading, they're both pushing forward, but one's pushing forward more than the other. Yeah. If you're not pushing forward and you engage auto heading, uh, one will reverse and one will go forward to try and hold it. Hold position. Yeah, and you can see that here. 
Uh, they're pretty close to neutral now. One's plus and one's minus, but. UPS job. So the orange bits are part of the Tina 4. Hey, you can see the little streamer coming out of the one at the bottom. Right there? Yeah, the yeah. Two, two streamers at the bottom. And then, yeah. yeah, if you look closely, you can see the streamers coming out. It's like those silk, the silk pieces inside of an ear of corn. Still hasn't been explained to me, or maybe it has and I didn't get it. If those are like a spider, do they make them or are they permanent and they can retract them and send them out? I don't know. They're quite, uh, quite long. The long tentacle-like structures? Yeah. So they so these are basically like the comb jellies, right? So they have the long trailing tentacles. So they have smaller cells on them. So they are not retracted as such. They have particles on those which can be retracted and fired. So it's just basically a benthic comb jelly. And we have some with very long trailing tentacles that float. They catch food using that. It's for moving, like they're moving and they're catching particles from the water. I'll look up especially for the benthic ones and get back in a minute or so. Tinafors are wicked predators. Okay, you want to uh Zoom out for me. That's a good question. About how much of this sample do we need? Maybe 10 centimeters? Yeah, a 10 centimeter snip will be perfect. Not too much. Roger. And we don't need to disturb any of the associates either, so we can go for that middle branch. Yeah, copy that. Just going to uh, rack the camera back here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to put it in a jar or do you want to put it in a box? Uh, no preference. So whatever, it, it won't float away. It shouldn't be floaty. It should sink. Should I think so. be in the keyword. Roger. I might be in a little tight here to... Um. And we have a starboard box C and D open. Right. As well as E and F, but it's small, so. Parallax error. Do you want me a little closer for you? 